We finally got our first snowy Hogwarts castle build and it only took 24 years. Today we're going to be talking about the Hogwarts castle Owlry, which is set 76430. And this set will retail for 45 US dollars, 70 Australian and 40 Great British pounds with 364 pieces and three exclusive minifigures. Straight off the bat, three minifigures does feel quite stingy for this price point, especially since one of them is actually a downgrade from a previous one. This set also belongs to a brand new line of Hogwarts castle buildings that are supposed to connect in order to create the most most detailed Hogwarts castle ever. Kicking things off with the minifigures, we have Harry Potter who has a brand new and exclusive torso print. And whilst his outfit is very simple, it is very noticeable exactly which look they were trying to replicate here. To go with Harry, we have Cho Chang who has that updated skin tone that they first introduced in 2023 for her. Like Harry, she has a brand new exclusive torso print and also comes along with a couple of really nice accessories including this dark blue scarf and this light blue skirt piece. And those small few extra details, I feel like really add a lot to this minifigure. And last but not least, we have Argus Filch, who unfortunately, whilst being exclusive, is actually a downgrade from his last appearance, which was in Dumbledore's office. Unlike the version from that set, this time around, he doesn't come with any leg printing, and for a set with only three minifigures, it is really disappointing to see. If there was a couple more minifigures in this set, I feel like I could excuse the downgrade a little bit. However, with so few, it really feels like they should have gone all out for all of these minifigures, just like they did with Cho Chang. However, with this set, I definitely understand why there wasn't more than three minifigures, considering that there aren't really many characters you could choose from. Even Filch feels like it's pushing it a little bit since he was only featured in this scene inside the books and nowhere to be found during the movies. However, I feel like throwing in a random Hogwarts ghost would have probably gone a very long way, even if it did feel just a little bit out of place. So with that being said, three minifigures for this set makes a lot of sense. However, I definitely feel like Filch should not have been downgraded the way he is. Minifigures aside though, let's talk about the build, starting off with all of the fantastic owls that are included in this set. Now recently I feel like Lego have been doing a bunch of new different owl reef colors as well as introducing a brand new tiny little baby owl piece. Which speaking of that piece it actually makes a return in this set being recolored into grey to represent Ron's owl Pidwigeon which I think is the perfect parts usage. The second owl recoloring we got is that really beautiful owl piece with the wings spread apart in this dark red color and I love the color scheme of him and it's really nice to see it make an appearance but as for the structure itself I am really happy with how tall they made this set as this actually stands at 36 centimeters or 14 and a half inches tall. But even though you might need a lot of vertical space for this set, it does have a relatively small floor plan, which should make it really easy to put on a shelf. With this build, my favorite aspect by far is the fact that it is absolutely covered with white pieces in order to represent snowfall. Now for me personally, Hogwarts coated in snow is one of my favorite things. To have a retail Hogwarts set that is covered in snow makes me really, really excited and also makes it feel very unique and fresh, even even though at its core, this set is not very different from any of the other Hogwarts Castle builds. Given its low piece count, this set is incredibly hollow. There really isn't a lot going on. However, I don't necessarily mind it because of how tall they were able to get it. It really feels like you're getting quite a lot of value for your money in terms of build. The base of the set is built up on a bunch of rocks with a staircase leading up the sides of the building with each step having a jumper plate, allowing minifigures to attach. It's also decorated with a couple of white leaf pieces and some white cheese slopes. And just like the boathouse from this same wave, there is a little tree built out of some upside down fern pieces to kind of make the build feel a little bit more consistent, which I'm very appreciative for. At the bottom of the build, there is a turning little platform that has a bunch of little accessories on either side. My personal favorite is the printed brick of the Elops Owl Emporium Owl Treats. The instructions also say to put Pidwigeon on this little owl perch, but besides that, there is really not too much else on this tiny little spinning platform, but there is a tiny rat lurking in the background. Moving up the build, and there are some really nice details, including this tank an owl structure, some letters lying around right next to the tiny little owl boxes, and a ton of open studs where you can place a variety of the owls included in this set. At the very top, there are two more lamp posts, a place to perch an owl, and where you are supposed to put this set's portrait. The portraits are randomized in each Harry Potter set, and there are 14 to collect in total, and personally, I would have really have liked to seen two of these included in this set, even though there isn't really space to include them in the build. The interior of the set is definitely quite bare bones, but at least to me, I do find it it quite faithful to the source material, so I am a really big fan of it. The exterior, on the other hand, I think is a lot more interesting, and I'm a really big fan of some of the build techniques that were featured here. Starting off with these little accessories that you would typically see in a LEGO Marvel superhero set in order to attach Power Blast piece to them, and I'm a really big fan of how they were placed on the back of some inverted slopes in order to add a little bit of extra detail on this tower section. I'm also a really big fan of how the white pieces are integrated into the build to really emphasize that snowfall, as well as just how many stuff studs 
over on the outside for all of the different owls to sit. Outside of the stairs though, there isn't a lot of space for you to pose your minifigures on the exterior of this set, and even when it comes to the interior, there isn't too much space to place them either. Despite this set being a part of a larger modular Hogwarts system, there aren't any attachment points in this set, which does make a lot of sense since the Owlery is its own little standalone building on the outside of the Hogwarts Castle school grounds. Overall, I think this set is really good value when it comes to the build department, however on the minifigure side of things, I feel incredibly let down when you pit this against other Harry Potter sets at this same price point. For the price though, the size of this build is absolutely fantastic, so I feel very torn when it comes to this set. Even something as simple as including a couple of extra of the mystery portrait pieces I think would have gone a long way when it comes to this build. In my eyes, this is definitely one of the better Hogwarts Castle builds and it's pretty good value for money, but at the same time it does feel a little stingy to me. I'm really excited to see where the rest of this Hogwarts Castle line takes us, but until then let me know what other minifigures you think should have been included in this set, and if you enjoyed this video please give me a thumbs up, consider subscribing to my channel for more Harry Potter reviews, and until next time I'll see you later.